Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about mayonnaise. So we will be looking at how this product is basically produced, what all ingredients are used for it and, uh, and basically what is the process being uh, utilized and then what are the characteristics of the final product. So mayonnaise is a very uh, important food product and how basically mayonnaise is produced, what mayonnaise basically is. So mayonnaise is basically a thick, creamy and a stable emulsion, right? So if you look at the uh, texture of the mayonnaise, it is a very thick, it has a very creamy kind of a texture and basically it is an emulsion or a dressing made up of oil, egg yolk and acid. So main three ingredients over here are, we are adding oil, then we are adding egg yolk and then we are adding acid such as a, we can add vinegar or we can add lemon juice right so basically it is an oil in water emulsion so mayonnaise is an oil in water emulsion so when we say oil in water emulsion we mean that the oil is dispersed in the water right so oil in water so water is the continuous phase and oil is the dispersed phase so oil is basically dispersed in the water when we talk about an emulsion basically so we have two types of emulsion oil in water and water in oil right so whatever is the first phase that we are writing is the dispersed phase and then the second phase that we are writing is the continuous phase so the continuous phase as the name tells is greater in quantity so continuous phase is present in much higher quantity whereas the dispersed phase is present in a much lesser quantity. So if you look at the mayonnaise basically it is an oil in water emulsion and generally what should happen is in an oil in water emulsion water should be present in high quantity and the oil should be present in low quantity. But in, in mayonnaise it is very interesting to note that the oil is present in high quantity whereas the water is present in low quantity. Generally this will happen in a water and oil emulsion right but in mayonnaise oil in water emulsion has this kind of case. So it is a complete opposite emulsion and that is a very interesting thing to note over here that how this kind of an emulsion is being created. So it is an emulsion in which oil is distributed in a continuous phase of water so it is an oil in water emulsion so oil is distributed in the continuous phase of the water water will be in the continuous phase and oil will be in the dispersed phase so major component generally major component see the continuous phase as i just told you the continuous phase is generally the major component that is present in higher quantity and the dispersed component is generally present in low quantity so major component is generally the continuous phase and the minor component is generally the dispersed phase but it is the complete opposite in a mayonnaise emulsion. So in mayonnaise oil, even though oil is the discontinuous phase, it is present in large quantity, 65 to 80% of the oil is present and the remaining is the water present. So how basically this is happening, we will look at how mayonnaise is be basically being produced. So mayonnaise with 80% oil, so generally mayonnaise oil content is around 65 to 80%. So mayonnaise which will have a 80% oil approaches the limit for stable oil in water emulsion because it will be unstable above 85%. See if we are using even more quantity of oil let's say 85% or even higher it will become unstable because it is very very difficult to dissolve this high amount of oil in a very very tiny amount of water in very very less amount of the uh, water. So as with more oil the droplets of the oil will become too dense right the oil droplets will become very heavy they will become very dense and it is very very difficult to make a emulsion out of it. Therefore dispersion of this large quantity of oil in relatively small aqueous phase needs a very very uh, good care. So because mayonnaise is a complete opposite emulsion we are going to disperse a very very large quantity of oil in a tiny quantity of water we need to choose the things wisely. So when we say we need to choose wisely as in we need to take very much care in choosing the type of the emulsifier, quantity of the emulsifier, the method that we are using as well as the equipment that we are utilizing all of this has to be taken care of. So now preparation of the mayonnaise. How basically mayonnaise is being prepared? So it is prepared by slowly adding one ingredient to another 
as we know for the production of emulsion we will add slowly because we don't want to break the emulsion formation so it is prepared by slowly adding one ingredient to another while simultaneously mixing rapidly so that we can disperse and suspend tiny droplets of one liquid into the another so we are adding one liquid into the another with continuous stirring so that it is dispersed into it so if if we look at the procedure first we have dispersal of eggs either powdered or liquid with vinegar or the lemon juice so first we have mixed the egg yolk with the lemon uh, with the uh, lemon juice or the vinegar then oil is added drop wise so we have to take care that we have to add the oil drop wise right we, we will not add all the quantity or a large quantity at once and continuous stirring has to be there so uh, we will be rapidly mixing it and if we add oil too quickly what will happen it will keep the liquid from combining emulsification will not occur however once the initial texture has been formed once the initial uh, in, in initial emulsion and the texture of the mayonnaise has been attained then we can add oil somewhat quickly as it thickens but initially we have to add it drop wise and continuous mixing has to be there so it can be done with hand also or otherwise we can utilize certain mixers as well then we will be adding the remaining ingredients that is whatever seasonings we want to add as per the taste they will be added at the end so time degree of agitation they all will have an influence on the final product that we are attaining so now we will be looking at the role of the eggs so eggs as we know is one of the main ingredient that we are adding in the mayonnaise so what is the role that the eggs play so eggs they act as an emulsifier and they contain lecithin the reason being is because they contain lecithin so basically they are the ones which are helping in the formation of which are helping in the formation of oil and water as we know oil and water are not miscible in one another right the reason that we are able to mix them together and form an emulsion is because of the presence of an emulsifier which will contain both the kinds of bond one which will be bonding to the water and one which will bonding to the fat and linking both of them together so what will happen one end of the molecule interacts with the water so one end of the uh, emulsifier is interacting with the polar group such as the water and the other end is a non polar and binds with the fat and as a result produces amphiphilic property so this property of binding one side with the water and one side with the oil is known as amphiphilic so because of this property emulsifier will help to bind this oil with the water and as a result this emulsifier will form which eventually if we mix oil and water it will not happen right but in case of an emulsifier it can happen because emulsifiers one bond one part of this molecule will connect to the oil and the other part will connect to the water so now the egg yolk also adds flavor and density to the sauce so uh, another another role that the eggs play to add the density and the typical flavor to the mayonnaise as well as help to stabilize the mixture they also help in stabilizing this mixture so reduced fat mayonnaise if we want to go for reduced fat mayonnaise then we can also utilize modified starch cellulose gel and other thickeners and emulsifiers commercially eggs have to be pasteurized now for the production of commercial scale mayonnaise it is very very important that we are using pasteurized egg the eggs need to be pasteurized first reason being is eggs have a very very high chances of salmonella infection so if we are not utilizing fresh eggs there are high chances that salmonella infection can occur in the uh, occur from the mayonnaise that we are consuming because we are utilizing the raw eggs in case of the mayonnaise right they are not being cooked if we are cooking it then chances of the salmonella infection will reduce but we are utilizing raw egg that is the reason they have to be pasteurized first so that with the eggs there are no chances of salmonella infection so lecithin uh, present in the egg is known to favor a oil and water emulsion and as we know mayonnaise is a oil and water emulsion we want to form an oil in a water emulsion but egg yolk also contains cholesterol right but on the other hand cholesterol favors a water and oil emulsion so what will happen is also if we are not utilizing fresh eggs the lecithin will degrade lecithin will suffer breakdown and it will degrade on storage reducing the emulsifying effectiveness why the emulsifying effectiveness is basically being reduced because lecithin to cholesterol ratio will be changed right so when we look basically the lecithin to cholesterol ratio we want 6.7 is to 1 nearly this ratio uh, is present in the fresh eggs but once on the storage the lecithin will degrade rapidly and as a result 
the ratio will become 8 is to 1 can become a, uh, as high as 8 is to 1. So the uh, lecithin amount will degrade very very much and what can happen as a result instead of the oil and water emulsion the water in the oil emulsion can be favored right that is something we do not want. So we want to utilize fresh eggs for few reasons we want to avoid any salmonella infection then also they have to be pasteurized and second we have to favor the oil in water emulsion and not the water in oil emulsion and if you are utilizing uh, eggs which are very very uh, kept for long time of storage the lecithin will be degraded and they will not be able to form a very good emulsion. So now looking at the role the vinegar plays in the uh, vinegar has to play in the mayonnaise. So min, uh, vinegar is basically required for the acidification and it influences the microbial stability. So it lowers the pH as well as we know it is an acid when we are adding it microbial stability will be provided and pH will be lowered the product will become stable. If the pH is higher than 4.1 it is not recommended. So mild or less sour mayonnaise require higher hygienic standard. If we want that the mayonnaise should not be that sour as we know vinegar will add a sour taste then if we are going for adding less of vinegar then the pH will be higher than the 4.1 then we have to keep even more care of the hygiene standards because there are more chances for certain infections especially and especially the salmonella infection. So it has been observed many times in the past that because of the consumption of mayonnaise certain outbreaks have been occurred people have fallen ill and once the pH of those mayonnaise were checked it was always higher than 4.1. So if it is high let's say 5 or 6 point something right if it goes to higher than 4.1 then salmonella infection can be very easily caused to the human beings consuming the mayonnaise and as a result the role of the vinegar is very very important because we want to give it a lower pH especially a pH below 4.1. So with this I end this video and I hope that this topic was clear to you. Thank you.